When a fisherman discovers a pregnant bear that had been immobilized by injury, he cares for her throughout the winter. A year later, he hears a strange sound that moves him to tears. Charlie Hansen, a fisherman, hoped that the first nibble on his fish line would not be far off. While he waited, he pulled out his binoculars and studied the opposite shoreline on Lake Snowcomb. There was a flock of geese gliding over the waters in perfect formation. Charlie narrowed his focus. Perhaps they knew something he didn't. Perhaps it would be worth his while to edge the boat slowly in that direction. But then, the wild geese changed direction. Something had disturbed them. Intrigued, Charlie Hansen moved his gaze a few inches towards the west. Something grabbed his attention. There had been a rock slide. There had been stormy weather a few days earlier. Charlie Hansen squinted as he saw something that did not completely blend in with the gray of the stones and rocks. Something brown and furry. He edged his boat nearer. The geese were lifting off, but he was now interested in whatever had spooked them. As he got nearer, he recognized that dark shape as the well-muscled arm of a brown bear. Nearing the jumble of strewn rock, Charlie Hansen thought that the brown bear was likely dead. An unfortunate victim of a natural disaster. He hoped that its passing had been quick and as pain-free as possible. But then, as he sat there respectfully gazing in its direction, he heard a rumble from that direction that went on for some time and gradually rose in pitch. He came to a shocking realization. The bear was alive. It was injured and suffering. Charlie sprung into action. He guided his little fishing boat all the way to the shore, secured it, and disembarked by leaping over the side. He waded the last few steps through shallow water, not knowing how to undertake this rescue operation, but there had to be something he could do. Nearing the bear, he saw to his relief that the situation wasn't as bad as it appeared at first glance. Most of the rockfall appeared to have missed the brown bear. Most, but not all. His lower limbs were partially held fast by a large boulder. At his approach, the stricken bear gazed at him, a desperate appeal for help plain to see in its eyes. But Charlie Hansen wasn't sure how he could help. The boulder was large and heavy, and whatever attempts Charlie made to shift it on his own would no doubt be unsuccessful. Charlie felt frustrated by his own helplessness. The bear was trapped in a remote location, far away from any possibility of help. But then, Charlie saw something lying on the ground that gave him an idea. The storm from a few days ago had not only shifted rock and mud from their original places, its powerful wind had also ripped branches from trees and strewn them about as if they were nothing. What Charlie now saw was a sturdy tree branch still strong and thicker than his arm. Unsure of whether it would be enough to be of use, Charlie Hansen picked up one end of the branch and gingerly made his way amongst the loose stones. As he reached the bear, he spoke quietly, explaining what he was going to do. Perhaps the bear was merely a dumb animal, but he had often in his long life been surprised by the intelligence of both tame and wild animals. First, Charlie took hold of the boulder and tried to wiggle it. It was no use. It remained fast. The branch made no difference at first, but as Charlie wedged it in deeper, the boulder lifted a few inches. Too little to make a difference, but enough to find momentary relief. But Charlie Hansen was tougher than he looked, and he did not give up on the situation. He kept up the motion of wiggling at the boulder, rocking it back and forth, back and forth, until inch by inch he was able to get more and more of it off the injured bear. It took Charlie almost an hour in some tense negotiation before the bear was finally freed, and by the time he was done, they were both panting for their breath. When he was able to get a better look at the bear, the old fisherman made a shocking discovery. This was a female, and she was pregnant. What had saved her was that extra layer of fat and muscle that all bears get when they bulk up for winter. Towards the end of fall, most brown bears ate much more in preparation of their torpor, a hibernation-like state consisting mainly of sleep when their metabolism slowed and they did not go out looking for food. It was a natural process that enhanced their ability to survive, but Charlie Hansen couldn't help feeling concerned about this particular bear's prospect for the winter. Although she had come through this calamity, her survival struggle was far from over. Charlie now saw that one of her powerful hind legs had suffered a fracture. This meant that she would be unable to find a safe layer for herself and the cub she was carrying in her belly. She needed help, but Charlie Hansen was unsure how he could provide it. A brown bear weighed much more than he did. Even if he was a much younger man, he would still struggle to move her to safety, and now, at his age, and with a back that sometimes gave out, the situation looked absolutely hopeless. The task truly seemed impossible, and it didn't help that the brown bear gazed at Charlie with suspicion in her eyes. 
Then Charlie remembered something that would help him gain the injured female bear's trust. When he went fishing, Charlie always carried something to nibble in the pockets of his waterproof parka. Dried berries, sandwiches, he had some jerky on him. As he took a piece out, he hesitated. Dare he get close enough to give it to the bear? She could easily snap her massive jaw right around his arm, and where would that leave him? On the other hand, he needed to gain her trust, and food was the easiest way to do that, especially if she might have lain here, injured and starving for days. Charlie Hansen tossed a piece of jerky towards the muzzle of the brown bear. She lay still for a moment, then her nostril twitched. She was getting the scent of food. Good. Charlie waited. The bear turned her head, her long tongue emerging and looking for that elusive snack. It took her a moment, but then she had the jerky. She chewed it, and when she was done, lay back again. Charlie tossed her a second piece. This one she found quicker, and it disappeared within moments. Then she tried to get up, but the sudden rebound of pain brought an angry, agonized cry of pain. That almost broke Charlie's heart and made it clear that she was unable to leave on her own. Charlie scratched his beard. He knew Lake Snowcomb better than his own backyard, having come here to fish for many years. More importantly, he knew of the existence of a hidden cave a little further to the western shore of the lake that would make the perfect den for this pregnant bear to recover from her injury while the climate got colder. As Charlie stood there pondering the problem, a flash of inspiration found him. Right at the back of his boathouse was something he could use. More than two decades ago, when Charlie Hansen's boys were still young, he bought them an inflatable dinghy which enabled them to spend many happy summer hours drifting across the lake, watching the bird lifers splashing in the water. Both were grown men now who worked far away in the city and raised their own families, but the inflatable dinghy still waited in a forgotten corner of the boathouse. Now, Charlie realized that this would at least help him to move the bear. His fishing lines abandoned, Charlie engaged the fishing boat's engines and returned to his home base on the other side of the lake. He packed more food for the stricken bear, berries, some fish, and honeycomb. Don't all bears love honey? On the return trip, Charlie began to entertain new concerns about the whole endeavor. Could he really trust a wild animal to understand that he was trying to help it? As he returned to the scene of the rock slide, the pregnant female bear still lay exactly where Charlie had left her. Her massive head was down, as if she had given up hope. But when she heard Charlie's approach, she opened her eyes, despair seeming to give way for a tiny flicker of hope. Charlie tossed her a piece of honeycomb, and the bear demolished it within moments. Now came the hard part. Could he persuade her to trust his intentions? Charlie used a piece of canvas and some ropes to slide the bear towards the inflatable. Once she took a swipe at him, but some more honeycomb persuaded her to be more reasonable. With care, Charlie checked the ropes before he returned to his own fishing boat and started the engine. The bear looked at him wearily. With a sign, Charlie killed the engine and took out the paddle he kept for emergencies. He would have to do this the hard way. Much to his relief, the network of ropes held, securing the injured bear to the inflatable. Now the old fisherman had some serious paddling to do. After almost half an hour, they reached the spot Charlie had in mind, and with great effort, he managed to drag his furry cargo ashore. The cave was little more than a hollow, but it was hard going, even with the help of the canvas. But then something unexpected happened. The pregnant bear spotted the hollow, and this brought an unexpected change in her demeanor. She rose lopsidedly and staggered the few steps toward this obvious place of sanctuary. Charlie was stunned by this unexpected burst of activity, but as soon as she was inside, the female bear collapsed, utterly spent. Well, at least she's safe now, Charlie thought. He left her some food, more jerky and honey cakes. The next day, Charlie Hansen returned to check on the pregnant brown bear and was surprised to be rewarded, not by a growl, but by a somewhat friendlier grunt. The bear had settled in and seemed to be comfortable. The injury worried Charlie, but at this point, he saw no opportunity for tending to it. About two days later, the weather turned cold, and when Charlie found the bear, she was groggy and sleepy. It was time to get to work. With a plank, he splinted the injured leg, hoping that this would help it to heal. Again, he left food, but when he returned the next day, he found that not all of it had been consumed. The pregnant bear's body was responding to nature's prompting and submitting to torpor. It was probably a good thing rest would help her to heal. Day after day, the old fisherman continued to check on the injured female, and one day he was rewarded with a priceless scene. In his absence, the female bear had given birth and she was contentedly humming to her two cubs. Charlie continued to attend to her needs. 
Sometimes she gratefully ate the food he brought and he would listen to the barking sound she used to converse with her young. At other times, she seemed too sleepy to care. After about six weeks, he removed the splint as the legs seemed to have healed. As the days grew longer and spring approached, the bear family in the hollow grew livelier and Charlie realized that his connection to them was coming to an end. One day, when the snow was melting and flowers were beginning to raise their petaled heads, the old fisherman found the hollow empty and the little bear family gone. Months passed. The fishing was abundant and winter fowl, such as wild geese, were returning to northern skies. When he tended his fish lines, Charlie often kept one eye on the shoreline. It pleased him to glimpse deer or shy foxes quickly darting away into the undergrowth. He even once saw a family band of wolves passing quickly over the rocks to pause on an outcrop. But subconsciously, he hoped to see something else, something larger. And one day, his patience was rewarded. Summer came to an end. Charlie Hansen realized that it was now a year ago that he had found that injured female bear amidst the strewn debris of a rock slide. The sun hung low in the sky and he had to shield his eyes as he glanced once more in the same direction. Nature had slowly rearranged those displaced rocks until they looked as if they had always been where they found themselves now. Charlie blinked and began to turn his boat back toward the opposite shore and home, but just before he started the engine, he heard a series of low, barking grunts. Someone unfamiliar with it might have missed its significance, but Charlie had heard it before. He remembered that sound. As he gazed back at those rocks, he thought he glimpsed something moving amongst them. Was it his imagination? No, there it was. The sun touched that magnificent coat of brown, making it seem as if it had been painted in many hues. The old fisherman held his breath. The creature stood very still and gazed straight at him. It was definitely a brown bear. Charlie dipped his hat. Then, the bear raised itself up to full height on its hind legs. It stood there for a moment, perfectly balanced, a little above the lake's southwestern shore. Moments passed and the bear remained standing there. Then, Charlie saw that the bear was not alone anymore. It was joined by two half-grown cubs flanking it on either side. They would not have been born had he not seen the bear's arm and somehow succeeded in freeing her. They were one with the lake so poignant and beautiful that Charlie had to wipe the tears from his face. Then, the adult bear got back up on all fours and began to climb. The cubs followed. Perhaps they were looking for a new den for winter, which was once again approaching. How wonderful of the female bear to say hello to Charlie after all this time. He must have been so relieved to discover that she was doing okay after her ordeal. Have you ever come across an animal that seemed to remember you from a past encounter? Let us know in the comments. We would love to hear from you.